Today on Personal Injury Court. This is the Black Leopard. This is the Black Leopard. So I went to rub her back, and then next thing I know, these claws, these four big leopard claws are at my face. You are suing for $350,000. I lost my finger because of you. This is not my fault. I happen to be the third incident in the past five years. There is a fence between Miss Stafford and this yes, black leopard. A definitive fence, and she crossed it. Judge Gino Brogdon spent 10 years on the bench ruling on cases worth billions of dollars. Now he presides over some of the largest claims in TV history. This is Personal Injury Court. Good day, everyone. This is the matter of Stafford versus Sharp and Rebecca's Big Cat Reserve. Ms. Stafford, it's my understanding that you are suing the defendants for your finger being ripped off by a black leopard. You're asking this court to award you $100,000 for past medicals, $100,000 for future medicals, and $150,000 for pain and suffering for a total award of $350,000. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And Ms. Sharp, you don't believe that this was your fault. You believe that this was her fault and she's responsible for her finger being ripped off. True? Y yes, Your Honor. Well, let's get into the legal sauce. Ms. Stafford, tell me about how you end up at a big cat reserve. I uh, have a full-time job uh, selling my own artwork. I make hand-sewn uh, embroidery, and a lot of my subjects are uh, cats. I, you can see right there, large that's, cats. That's some of your work? That's some of my work, yes, Your Honor. Uh, and so I um, sell online, but I also go to farmer's markets and festivals, and that's actually where I met Rebecca. She was just at a farmer's market, and she happened upon my artwork, and we bonded over our love of cats. So you knew Miss Sharp before this day? Yes, Your Honor. We've okay. known each other for one year. And Miss Sharp, you all were friends before this happened, right? Yes, absolutely. T tell me about how someone gets a big cat reserve. <laughs> I grew up in Africa. I grew up with elephant and giraffe. Spent a lot of time outdoors. Um, my dad was an archaeologist, and he, <laughs> I love cats, um, always had animals. But in Africa, we went to the wild animal sanctuary, and that's when I really fell in love with big cats. And I knew in my life I wanted to do something with animals to help them. Now, that looks like a house cat. I mean, that you're is. not at your reserve. It's not house cats, right? No. Our reserve is huge. Um, I've had it for about six years now. Oh, so we have um, baby tigers. This is Monique. Like this? And that's a baby tiger. That's a baby tiger. So we also have um, a lynx, which is a little bit smaller of the big cats. OK. Kind of bigger than your average house cat, but uh, pretty formidable. This is Jackie. She's our black leopard. This is the black leopard. Now, she looks pretty calm, right? I she mean, is. she's bigger than a house cat, but oh, yeah. kind of looks like a house cat on steroids, right? <laughs> so you have all these cats in the reserve. They're in cages? No. If what, you, what are they in? They are in an enclosure, so there are fences and boundaries, but they, they have their own habitat. Ms. Stafford, you end up at this big cat reserve. How'd you get there? She invited me for a private uh, tour. So you had to be pretty excited about that. I was really excited, yes. So what happened? Uh, so Rebecca really was being a friend and was trying to calm me down and uh, telling me how gentle and sweet these cats are. Okay. And I was right by her side. She walked me right up to the enclosure, and then she turned her back. She, she went away, and uh, she did a good job of easing my nerves, so I went to pet Jackie because she kept saying how sweet she was. So I went to rub her back and then next thing I know these claws, these four big leopard claws are at my face and my face is gashed, uh, blood dripping everywhere there. It was so much blood, Your Honor. And then um, next thing I knew before I could even think, my hand, uh, she, she bit my uh, ring finger, Your Honor. Um, and as you can see, it's gone. I have a partially amputated ring finger, and um, and I, I lost my engagement ring. I had just gotten a few weeks prior. I was newly engaged, uh, and it's gone. Ms. Sharp, do you you remember this day? Obviously, right? Tell me how you remember it happening. 
I invited Miss Courtney to come, and I thought that this could really help with her artwork. And I invited her on a private tour because I thought she would have a better chance of interacting, seeing the animals, not interacting with them, but just seeing them and appreciating their size. So this could maybe help out her artwork. And I turned my back to attend to one of the other animals, and I just hear screaming, turn around, and this is one of the most horrific things I've ever encountered, and Courtney is bleeding, I run to her attention, I took my own shirt, and I This was a put bad it scene. It was bad. I, I called 911, I got her to immediate medical attention. Did um, this surprise you that Jackie would do such a thing? Jackie the leopard? Jackie has never demonstrated any form of aggression. Um, but Jackie is a wild animal, and when her space has been encroached, she's gonna communicate, and she did. Well, if you invite her to the park, what did you expect that she was gonna do with Jackie? I thought that she would see Jackie and feel her presence, but not touch. Why didn't you just look and not try to touch? Your Honor, she brought me right up to the enclosure. As she said, there, there are no cages. So it just gives this inviting feeling like these are animals that you can interact with. And again, she was calming me. She said that Jackie was so sweet. She mischaracterized Jackie. I never and told said that you she was, was so safe sweet. Excuse me, I am talking. Coming up. Miss Sharp, she does look sweet, right? Of course, but, you know, a grandma can tell her kid that she's got sweet cheeks, sweet enough to eat, but it's a figure of speech. You don't eat the kid's cheeks. She just thinks she's going to be all lovey-dovey, sing kumbaya, and be best friends with a kitty, kitty, kitty cat. This is a wild animal. If I shouldn't have been in that area, she should have had me step back. I lost my finger because of this. I lost my finger because of you. Jackie has never demonstrated any form of aggression, but Jackie is a wild animal. So it just gives this inviting feeling like these are animals that you can interact with. And again, she was calming me. She said that Jackie was so sweet. She mischaracterized Jackie. I never and told said that you she was, was so safe sweet. To... Excuse me, I'm talking. She gave me no reason to believe that there was any... Had you ever that been a... that close to a leopard before? No, Your Honor. Okay, so this is a first-time experience. If she says mm -hmm. Jackie's sweet, you think Jackie's sweet? Exactly. That's a leopard. I mean, Miss Sharp, she does look sweet, right? Of course, but, you know, a grandma can tell her kid that she's got sweet cheeks, sweet enough to eat, but it's a figure of speech. You don't eat the kid's cheeks. <laughs> when you own a reserve that has these dangerous animals, then you don't rely on figure of speech. You say explicitly what you can and cannot do, and you did not do that. Well, you know, y'all talk like friends today, but you gotta talk to me today. Y'all can be friends after this, okay? Yes, Your Honor. T so Jackie is a wild animal, right? Right, not a You knew that, true? True. Jackie is sweet and beautiful and formidable, but she is not someone you would snuggle with, and I don't know how Miss Courtney thought she's gonna be all lovey-dovey, sing kumbaya, and be best friends with a kitty, kitty, kitty cat. This is a wild animal. How would she know not to pet it if the, if the animal is close enough to touch it? There is a boundary. We have a fence line. Everybody knows you don't cross the yellow line on the street. I don't know if she needs somebody in the car with her just to remind her not to cross the yellow line. I don't appreciate that because that is that's something that's every day. This is not an everyday situation. That's it's, right. So it was her responsibility as the owner to really talk me through what I can and can't do. She's the one who walked me up to the enclosure. So if I shouldn't have been in that area, she should have had me step back. And you know, Your Honor, I lost my finger because of this. I lost my finger because of you. You waited until my back was turned, just like a little kid who would want to well, take a well, cookie did you from tell her to wait? Star. Did you tell her, look, she never hold on asked. for a minute. She never asked you. She never asked. I know my cat. And Jackie, I would say, no, do not touch. I see that you are asking this court to uh, award you $100,000 for future medicals, and you have submitted $100,000 in past medicals. Yes. You got a big financial burden. Yes, Your Honor. Because you know, in these cases, it's a, an emotional burden, a financial burden, a lifelong 
bag of sand on your back when you have injuries mm -hmm. like this. And, and Your Honor, a bride has so many expenses to begin with. I, I was already budgeting these for are this wild. big wedding. Uh, so I just def definitely did these not are expect wild these expenses. Cats. And I feel terrible that you lost your finger and that you've had to undergo these surgeries and this pain. I can't imagine what you've been through, but these are wild animals. You don't need to be told not to stick your hand in an electric socket. <laughs> these are things you should know as a grown adult. Next. A wild cat, you just know, is a wild animal. Who would stick their hand into the presence of an animal? I, I wasn't out in the wild. I happen to be the third incident in the past five years. I actually uh, provided a video today. This court has consulted an animal behaviorist named Greg Smith Aldridge. These guys will never be domesticated. They're always a wild cat, no matter how long they spend in captivity. And I feel terrible that you lost your finger, and I can't imagine what you've been through, but these are wild animals. You don't need to be told not to stick your hand in an electric socket. These are things you should know as a grown adult. A wild cat, you just know, is a wild animal. And you do everything in your power to stay away from them. You, who would stick their hand into the presence of an animal, knowingly? What did you think would happen? Your Honor, Why if, did you if want I may, to touch I, I wasn't out in the wild. I'm at this sanctuary where these animals With have been fence. groomed and trained, so I, I didn't know. Ladies, I know very little about house cats and even less about wild cats. This court has consulted an animal behaviorist named Greg Smith Aldridge. We're going to bring him in so he can tell us about these wild cats. Sheriff Matt, will you get Mr. Smith Aldridge? Yes, Your Honor. Don't touch, Courtney. Mr. Smith Aldridge, what kind of cat is this? This is a Canadian lynx. This is Adam. He's a five-year-old male, and this is the biggest he will get. He's about 25 pounds. Well, how do wild cats behave around people? These guys will never be domesticated. They're always a wild cat, no matter how long they spend in captivity. What makes a wild cat like this aggressive or agitated? There are so many factors. I mean, any amount of teasing or goading, uh, you know, and it could be something that the person doesn't even really realize that they're doing. Uh, it could be something that set these guys off. But is there a safe way for the average person to interact with a wild cat like this? The average person? No, not without supervision by professionals. I mean, if you're running a sanctuary and this is something that you do on a daily basis, then I would consider you a professional. Um, but somebody who's just an average stepping up to interact with an animal that doesn't know anything, that's not safe. Well, with the black leopard, are there any warning signs that Miss Stafford would see and notice and heed to? Cats have a lot of warning signs. Their eyes flash green, their ears go back, uh, their tail would thump rapidly. These are all like we call a big cat an honest animal for that reason. They are going to display before they strike. Miss Stafford, did you see any of this when this black leopard attacked you? Your Honor, I only had time to reach my hand out and I was already being attacked. It wasn't this nice progression of these warning signs that I could have read. One of the things that you did was you got into her space and that was Jackie's territory. But you didn't prevent uh, me well, Adam from Adam looks like he's getting a little uncomfortable. Space. So, uh, Mr. Smith Aldridge and Miss Burns, thank you so much. You all can take Adam back into the room. Thanks very much. Thank you, <laughs> Sheriff. Adam's looking at you like y'all know each other. Ready? <laughs> no, I don't know him. Oops, sorry. Safety never takes a holiday. Is your place safe even in light of this? It is 100% safe. And if people follow certain guidelines, then I thought that Courtney understood not to touch a wild animal, specifically one she'd never even been around before. And Your a Honor, wild she's animal. not telling the full truth. Well, I, tell me about I it. I happen to be the third incident in the past five years. One of the incidents, I actually uh, provided a video today, and this actually happened to two of her workers. Well, let's take a look at it. Now, Miss Sharp, this is at your Big Cat Reserve, right? Right. You call that safe? Well, 
our volunteers handled themselves perfectly. And yes, they did incur some scratches from this, but they've come back. They understand the risk that they assume by taking on this passion in life. So for the record, there is a fence between Miss Stafford and this yes, black leopard. A definitive fence, and she crossed it. I did, Your Honor, but that was after she coached me through saying how sweet this animal was. Ahead of this visit, I informed Miss Courtney to go look at my website. It says explicit instructions of do not touch. Look at the animals. Keep I mean, that looks distance. like safety to me. Didn't you know you're not supposed to touch the animals? Your Honor, she did tell me to look at the website, but again, this was not a normal visit. She invited I, me to be her guest, and so I, I admit I, I did not look I at the website at your because website. she was just, I was an invited guest, and so I So you didn't look at the website? Not, not prior to the event, no. So, Ms. Sharp, if the, if the patron doesn't look at the website, how will they know to not touch, keep safe distance, those kind of things? Miss Courtney showed no signs that she had not reviewed the website. She was keeping her hands to herself. She wasn't making eye contact. You can't assume that I didn't, uh, that I, I looked at the website. I can't assume that you, you would assume... stick your hand in the tiger's Right, so tent. you should have prepared me. You should have prepared me. You should have walked me through. I think I've heard enough. I'm ready to render my decision. The verdict is in. You're asking this court for a total award of $350,000. You thought it was safe because she assured you that the cats were calm and you thought they were pettable. You have put up evidence, Miss Sharp, that these are wild animals. She should have gone to your website and looked at do not touch, keep a safe distance, don't treat these as house cats. These guys will never be domesticated. They're always a wild cat, no matter how long they spend in captivity. I happen to be the third incident in the past five years. This is your website here? Yes, it says explicit instructions of do not touch. I think I've heard enough. I'm ready to render my decision. Folks, in every personal injury case, the plaintiff, you, Miss Stafford, have to prove three things. You've got to prove that Miss Sharp was wrong, and that her wrong caused your injuries. Here, you've put up evidence that you went to her big cat reserve, you thought it was safe because she assured you that the cats were calm, and you thought they were pettable. You reached in through the fence, and this black leopard tore your finger off and scarred your face forever. You have put up evidence, Miss Sharp, that these are wild animals. She should have gone to your website and looked at do not touch, keep a safe distance, don't treat these as house cats. Right. But you did not warn her at the scene. Here, the evidence indicates that both parties have participated in the outcome. The legal principle that applies is comparative fault. Here, I find that both of you were at fault, but not equally at fault. With a wild animal, you've got an extra burden to make sure that people are safe, but this was not all your fault. Based on the evidence, I find that you are 51% responsible and you, Ms. Stafford, are 49% responsible. I find in your favor for 51% of what you are seeking, which is $178,500, I find in your favor and against the defendant, that is my final award and this matter is adjourned.